would be good to talk about why we're doing this, Chip. Mm -hmm. That this filming project has been on our mind now for two or three years. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, when I traveled throughout the UK and uh, Scotland a couple of years ago, I really noticed that um, Sid was being innocently left out of the picture more and more, you know, that a lot of people weren't familiar with his role in this understanding of the three principles. And I had some folks even say to me, you know, why is it so important to know about Sid? Isn't the three principles the message themselves? And it was a really good question, and it's it's a common question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And I know you had the same as you were traveling throughout, you know, on your travels. Um, and so th this question was coming primarily from new people that would come to a program I was doing. And something really struck me in Glasgow, in Scotland, where I had a very deep insight about if we if we lose Sid's role in this understanding, we're losing the essential message because it's not just the principles. The principles are supremely important in terms of they underlie the human experience. They tell us how the human experience is created. There's there's such profundity in that that the world is just having a weak glimmer of those spiritual facts. But it's Sid's experience. It's what happened to this non-professional, ordinary working man. Yeah. His experience, I see as equally important as mm. the three principles. But it was really in Scotland, which I think is kind of neat, that it became very clear that to sort of raise the flag again and help people understand why it's essential that Sid remain a part of this understanding. Let me say again, Sid's experience, so that it's, I've talked about it as it being a two-pronged approach, that there's Sid's experience, the spontaneous epiphany he had that revealed to him these three divine principles and the three principles. So there's this two-pronged approach that meet and become one. And another analogy I've used is it's the same coin. On one side of the coin is Sid's experience and how that opened a whole new world to him, a world that he never knew about. Uh, and the other side of the coin is the three principles, yeah. and they're one coin. You mm -hmm. can't divorce them. No. If you only have one, you have half the package, if you just have the principles. And so I really want to emphasize that again, and I know we talked about it in one of our other filming sessions, but... That's the original intent of this, was to come together and to be able to say it's not that we're honoring Sid, the man, although we have honor for him because of, of how he helped us see and that helped us transform our lives, but that we're honoring the experience that happened to him yeah. and we're honoring what the experience brought forth and when you have that you have the complete package mm -hmm. and the other thing I, I want to say is that as, as I was traveling and again I know this is the same for you as I was traveling and started to share more about Sid and what he brought to the world, this gift that he left the world, I could see how touched people were. Mm -hmm. That it brought out a feeling of our true nature. 
And that's what sharing the pureness of Sid's experience and the principles brings to the picture as well, that it, it's not just a psychological understanding of these three principles or even a psychological understanding of the power of insight. It's the feeling that sharing the complete story of Sid brings about because he uncovered his true nature. And as soon as you start talking about true nature of humanity and of life and of the principles, it does this, it, it's like it, it has a mystical power, a mysterious power that draws out whoever you're talking to, it draws out their true nature. Mm -hmm. And there's such power in that, that that helps people see they're already home. It's not about taking people home. It's helping people see they're already home. It's true nature talking to true nature. Yeah, the picture's not complete with the three principles without understanding the genesis of the three principles. That a mystical occurrence happened, which, you know, over time through thousands of years happens every once in a while to give mankind a, a truer sense of who and what they are. And, and that being the only way to solve all the issues that plague this world, you know. And so when we look at the genesis of the principles, they go back to a mystical experience that one man had, you know, that everything flowed through him in that experience. Now, out there in the world today, there are a lot of ideas about what the principles are. Like, some people think the principles are a form of psychology. They're not. The principles inform psychology in a way that nothing else ever has because it informs us of our own true nature of who and what we really are and I I think that's what when Sid started talking that's what he was talking about from the very beginning who and what we really are and that understanding informs psychology in terms of how do you really help people do you help them with a misunderstanding that they're the sum total of their thinking in their past? Or do you help them with understanding that they, their own true nature exists and is unhurt and undamaged no matter what? And that that's the source of healing. And when I think of what Sid brought to the world, truly I do think of it as a miracle, as a moment in time, a moment out of time, when the pinpoint of where reality begins was, was shown to Sid. He understood in his, far more than I ever will or you ever will, but he understood where existence begins and how it begins and how it generates through time, you know? And it, it's just hard to imagine how much more profound than you could get to that, the pinpoint where nothing becomes something. And he talked about that throughout his whole life. And it's true that we can't understand that intellectually, but we can feel it when we look towards the mystical, when we look towards the fact that something very mystical occurred, something that rarely, rarely happens to anybody, and that it picked whatever it is, this simple working guy is perfect, is perfect. Because after he saw that, as we've discussed before, the evidence of his understanding the origins, the genesis of our experience was in his change because it was in understanding that genesis that he, he could be anything he wanted to be. And he proved that to us every day of his life. And I think when we talk to people and we, we move away from talking about, just talking about their thinking and the psychology there's something really magical that happens because there's a part of them 
as there is with all of us, that can hear that, that we are spiritual beings. And that, that genesis from nothing to something is happening every moment for all of us. So I think when we see people light up and they have tears in their eyes, it's that somewhere, not here, but somewhere, and they're feeling that. And to me, that's the only thing that can really explain all the transformational change we've seen through all of these years, starting with Sid Banks. Yeah. You know? And I, I know that something that really bears consideration is that this profound realization occurred to a non-professional. Yeah, I want to say absolutely. that again. It bears repeating. Like when Einstein discovered uh, MC... The theory of relativity. The theory of relativity. He, he was a physicist. Yeah. And, and that changed the world of physics. Mm -hmm. But he was a physicist. He was a professional in that field. Yeah, yeah. But for Sidney Banks, who was a welder at the time of this epiphany, he was out of the field. He knew nothing about yeah. psychology. He couldn't even spell psychology. <laughs> he, yeah. he had no background education in the field. He was truly a non-professional. This bears consideration. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And this was something that when his work was taken into various universities, uh, that wasn't looked at. Mm -hmm. The results weren't looked at. Uh, they, they couldn't wrap their head around what had happened to this man. And yet, they did start a, a professional institute based on Sid's work, which took enormous courage. Yeah. And I, I think, again, you know, for the world to reflect on this understanding came to a non-professional who knew nothing about psychiatry, mm -hmm. knew nothing about mental health, nothing about psychology, who himself was simply looking for a nicer life, yeah. a nicer relationship with his wife and family, a nicer way to be at work. And out of the blue, this spontaneous experience happened. Even to reflect on that yeah. has a way of helping an individual soul see the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Because so often, as individuals, and as human beings, we slip into, it's all about me. You know, it's all about my thinking and my learning and all that. And I, I can't say enough about reflecting on the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Helps you go deeper. It takes you to a deeper feeling of our true nature. Yeah. Because our true nature is the bigger picture. Our human nature is more the form. It is the form. So when you look at how fascinating our human nature is, and then you reflect on who and what we are, there's something magical that happens with that. Yeah. You, you slip into this world of reflection and contemplation where you're not even reflecting on anything yeah. as much as feeling a feeling, yeah. feeling the feeling of who and what we really are. And then all of a sudden, insight starts to happen. And even insight without content, where it's just mm -hmm. this feeling of
residing in contentment. And that was the other piece that Sid talked about from day one. Once you have a glimmer of who and what you really are, that's enough. You know, if you have an insight about thought or consciousness or mind, that's enough then. Don't keep talking about it. Just live. Mm -hmm. Just live. Yeah, live and be ordinary. And when we would tell stories, you know, both together as we were traveling and doing, sharing this work, this beautiful message of hope and transformation, we could see the power of, first of all, of Sid's story. We could see how it was like the audience was mesmerized by the story and the feeling it evoked. And that's why we're doing this, is to help people see that when more and more people that have been touched by this themselves, it's beautiful, share your story, yes. But when you share, as you talk about it, Chip, the genesis of this story, it's like the original story, mm -hmm. there's something very, very yeah. profound that happens. that ultimate respect for the fact, the spiritual fact that everybody has this wisdom within them. To just look away from everything to this beautiful feeling and trust that when people look back at their lives from that, if you want to call it a new perch, a new vantage place, a new level of consciousness, they see everything they need to see for their lives. And so all the discussion about what we're doing and not doing about our thinking, while it has some short-term benefits, pales in comparison to people having that viewpoint for themselves and seeing, just seeing who and what they are. They look back on the rest and they see it with understanding. I love when Sid used to talk about the answer to all complexity lies in simplicity. That used to puzzle me beyond belief. You know, like how could the answer to all complexity be in simplicity? Until I had the experience of standing still and feeling that beautiful feeling. And then everything I looked at from that place looked different to me. All that complexity looked so much more simple and more understandable, you know, in a nice way. And so I Again, the fact that this ordinary working guy had this experience and continues, even without him being present, how it continues to help people find that place within themselves and see for themselves. And there's nothing to teach people in that sense. I love that. Mm -hmm. That simplicity, mm -hmm. the world seen through the true simplicity, which is when we're quiet for a bit when we've listened to see it or read, that there's nothing that compares to it. No, you could talk for 3,000 years and not learn as much as that moment that you, you get to see the world from that different place. Just to wrap this up, Chip, again, is to say that it's the simplicity of the feeling, that deep feeling of essence, that is our, our teacher. Yeah, always will be. And as you beautifully put it, that
it's it's Sid is the messenger, but it's the experience and the principles together as one. Absolutely. <laughs>